Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, Mario Rodriguez, Executive Director of the Long Beach Airport, as we continue our 22nd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a great show for you tonight. Our guest for the whole show is Mario Rodriguez, who's the executive director of the Long Beach Airport. Mario, welcome. Great to be here, Art. Thank you for inviting me. It's been, it's our pleasure. It's taken five years to get you on this show and you had announced your departure before you finally accepted. Well, Art, it's my pleasure to be here. It was wonderful to be invited by you. Yes. Well, Congratulations to you and your team on the really magnificent job you guys have done uh, modernizing the airport, making it so user-friendly, uh, national recognition. I understand we were just voted one of the top 10 airports in the world in the same list as Heathrow and others. Oh, it, it, it's a wonderful recognition and it's wonderful for the city of Long Beach. Remember, the airport is just a reflection of the city. We didn't do anything different than the city has. It but you captured the city in your terminal, so you feel like you're already on vacation when you arrive. Oh, absolutely. It's a great gateway to the city. Yeah. People come in and they see what they see in the city. They see a very modern, very hip, very beautiful terminal, which is very congruent with the rest of the city. And I love what you did with the restaurants. You. Uh, worked out uh, arrangements with local restaurants that mm -hmm. have their analogs at the airport with street pricing, not the crazy prices you see at some of the airports. And as you say, it really reflects the community. It, it is wonderful. The restaurants are wonderful. As a matter of fact, something is happening at our airport that doesn't happen anywhere else. People usually that arrive at an airport want to get the heck out of the airport. They want to leave. They want to leave automatically. They want to stay? No, there are some that are staying. Our concessionaires, the restaurateurs are amazed that people are coming off of the airplane, going to the wine bar, having a Real? couple of glasses oh, of wine, great. watching the game, having some tapas. It, it, it's something, that it's is something completely different. Well, let's take a look for those few of you that have not yet been. And uh, Mario, you can tell us what we're seeing. Well, that's the meter and greeter plaza. It, that's where people come out. They could meet their family and greet their families. And in the background, you could see the main core of our, of our concourse. This is the jet blue area of our concourse. There's another area that handles U.S. Air, Delta, and Alaska. But you can see the, the uh, iPad bar in the back. It's nice. for your use. High-speed Internet, free of charge. And that is our 4th Street Vine. If you think the airport looks like a resort hotel. <laughs> it should. We copied it. We copied a resort hotel. That's the feel that we wanted to give our customers. Inspired choice. That's our retail shop. There are two retail shops and they have high-end retail. It's all street pricing so you don't feel like you're getting gouged. This is a Let parking. me say, yeah. believe it or not, this is a parking garage. This is a $50 million, $57 million parking garage. I think it's the prettiest parking garage I have ever seen. And it just shows you the love with which this project was put together. Well, and it's all about customer service. We wanted to make sure our customers were comfortable. And that parking garage has indicators as to how many parking spaces are left on each floor, which is amazing. That's the iconic terminal. It's still functional. It still works. We rehabbed it. Everything is operational. For you movie lovers, this was used in the movie Nixon to portray Burbank Airport, I think. And finally, here's the money shot, the closure, sunset at Long Beach Airport. Sunset at the Long Beach Airport, and it's a beautiful terminal. It's still operational. Well, when you came in, there was, uh, and this is no secret, quite a debate going on as to the proper size of the terminal and the size of the parking garage and hush one, hush two, hush three. This has been going on for years. 
And although it started to resolve itself a little bit before your arrival, you accelerated the settlement, got it right-sized, and then built this $45 million modernization terminal and the $57 million garage on time, under budget, ahead of time, actually. A little bit ahead of time. What's the, what's the secret of getting things under budget and ahead of time? It's so rare you hear that these days. You know, one of the most interesting things and one of the most rewarding things that I, I was able to do here is lead a magnificent team at the airport. And this team was able to bring all of this together and bring it in under budget and ahead of schedule. And the concept of, of we only gave Long Beach what Long Beach deserved. And Long Beach deserves this type of gateway and it deserves this type of entrance to the city. And we were able to do it for a budget which is about one-tenth the cost of normal airports. And we did that taking... Wow elements from the city. No, we took elements from the city. So how do you get such a superior product at 10% of the cost? I we, mean, we don't copy Chicago O'Hare. Wow. That's what we did. <laughs> most, most airports, what they do is they say, well, you know what, we're going to take a model and Chicago O'Hare looks all right, so we're going to reduce it down in size, and what you get is a miniature Chicago O'Hare. There's no institutional feel to our airport. There shouldn't be. We made it sure reflects it the city. As it reflects the city. The city doesn't have an institutional feel. It has gardens. We have a garden. The city is bright. It's Southern California. It's wonderful weather. You want people to experience that to get a sense of place. We have fire pits that are reflective of the entire city. Wine bars that are open. Restaurants. And are obviously, open. it works. What you said mm -hmm. earlier really caught my attention. That deplaning passengers who are always rushing to get the hell out of an airport and get wherever, they pause and they have a drink. I find it amazing. <laughs> I find it amazing. It's street pricing, so some of them decide, well, let's have dinner, let's have drinks, let's stay here. Wow. Okay, we'll continue with this wonderful discussion after we pause for these messages. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com. The Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. Hello, I'm Jessica Hardy, a proud Long Beach native and a member of the USA Swimming national team. Having spent much of my life in water, I've developed a deep appreciation for the valuable role that this precious resource plays in our lives. In recent years, California's water supply has become unreliable. To address this reality, Long Beach residents have dramatically reduced their water use through permanent lifestyle changes. In doing so, Long Beach has made itself a leader in water conservation. As I work hard to achieve my personal goal of qualifying for the 2012 Summer Olympics, I encourage you to continue your tremendous efforts to use water in smart and responsible ways. So join me and your fellow Long Beach residents in strengthening the water conservation movement. By making small but significant changes in our water use habits, together we can ensure that we have a reliable water supply for many generations to come. The most difficult thing about becoming a Long Beach Police Explorer? The first week. <laughs> for a young age, it's a great opportunity. If it wasn't for this program, God knows where I'd be. So many doors open for you. All the training that you receive. Before I started this program, I didn't have a sense of confidence. It really gave me that sense of direction. It gave me the right mentors, the right people I needed. It's the best choice I've made. This program is what really taught me what life is about and really prepared me to live another day and feel proud to serve my community.